Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Maya Nazareth and on this channel I talk about everything from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to my business, Alchemize Fightwear, which is a women's MMA and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gear company um, and building a life that you love because that's what I'm trying to do. So let's jump into it. Today I'm gonna to be talking about exactly what it's like to train Jiu Jitsu as a woman. And this video is inspired by my friend. She's been a supporter of Alchemize in the past, Kimberly Kanch. I'll tag her uh, channel down below. I just found it the other day when I was doing some research for this video. And um, she makes awesome videos about Jiu Jitsu as well. So go check her out. But I'm gonna dive into what it's been like for me to train Jiu Jitsu as a woman and what I've seen from, from other women. This is gonna be the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, I've made a video also, and I'll, I'll put it right here, about the benefits of jujitsu for women. But today I'm gonna to get into some of the things that they don't tell you that maybe you wanna know before you start it. Let's get into it. So number one thing that I wish I knew as a woman going into jujitsu is that I was gonna to have to say goodbye to all of the things that made me feel feminine. Um, my hair was gonna get destroyed. I mean, if you look underneath here, I just have damage to my hair from it getting ripped out of my head. You know, you get sometimes fistfuls of hair ripped out of your head every training. That I was gonna have like super short, usually unpainted. This is super rare that I have painted nails and it's actually gel polish um, that I did at home, but it, that I'm gonna have to say goodbye to long, painted, beautiful nails. Um, I usually, like, Probably I paint my nails once a year, so you're catching me at a good time. But even on my toes, it just chips constantly. When you make grips, if you're playing like spider guard, or um, even like if you have your feet on someone, if you're playing X or, or whatever, your nails are not gonna last. So going to like get a nice manicure or a pedicure and pampering yourself in that way becomes something that just doesn't make sense, especially if you train every day, like most of us do, or at least I do. You have to kind of say goodbye to that. What I do now is I, I cut my nails really short. If I really wanna, like if I'm going out or something, which is why I had these painted, I use like a, a gel polish. I can show you exactly what I use, one second. So if I'm going out somewhere, I use a, a gel polish like this. Like this is a two-step that you can buy from CVS. Um, and that stays a little bit longer, but as you can see, my nails are still chipped from training. So I haven't found anything that works super well, but most likely you're gonna give up that part of your routine. Also, I know a lot of girls start having like skin problems and things when they start training jujitsu, just your face gets rubbed on the mat, you're like sweating a lot. Um, I've not had too many skin problems, but definitely I have bruising, I've had black eyes, I've had like scuffs on my face, like, like bloody scuffs, I broke my nose. You're just gonna have, you're gonna be marked up and your coworkers and your friends and your family are gonna be maybe concerned about you. I used to get questions at work, like, and this is not funny, but I used to get questions at work, like, hey, are you okay, Maya? Like, is someone like hurting you at home or, or anything like that? And I'm like, no, it's just jujitsu, right? And so your your body is not gonna be um, like so pristine like it might have been in the past. You're gonna have bruises, scuffs, um, and that kind of thing. Number two that I wish I knew along those lines is how hard jujitsu is on your body. So. I mean, I've been training for five and a half years now and I've had quite a few injuries. I've broken my nose, dislocated my shoulder, I tore my hamstring, um, and I had someone fall on my chest and had like some tearing of cartilage in my rib cage. And I don't think that's the norm. Maybe people don't get as hurt as much as I, I had. And you know, when I first started training, I would roll with anyone. It didn't matter if the guy was a white belt and um, 230 pounds, I would roll with him, right? Which now I'm much smarter about my training partners because I wanna be in the sport for a long time and I wanna have longevity and I don't wanna get hurt. So I, I, I just don't feel as much like I have something to prove anymore. I feel more like, okay, let me take care of my body. But Jiu Jitsu, no matter what, is hard on your body. Just some of the movements, like if you're doing wrestling and takedowns, it's pretty hard on your neck. If you're inverting and you get stacked, it can be hard on your spine. Um, so I wish I knew that going in, maybe, I wouldn't have started jujitsu if I knew that, and jujitsu changed my life, and I love it, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But definitely, there have been times in my jujitsu journey where I've questioned, like, is this worth it? I feel like I'm 22 years old. I feel like I'm just aging my body so much more rapidly for this sport. So um, if that's something that you wanna consider, or maybe you're in the sport already, and, and you know that, um, that's something I wish I knew before I started. 
Tip number three that I wish I knew when I started jujitsu, I didn't know what I was walking into. I thought maybe I was walking into a kickboxing class or I had no idea. I just searched jujitsu online. I really don't even know what compelled me to look that specific martial art up, but I went to a gym and I didn't know what I was walking into. And honestly, I, I talk about this all the time. If I had known where I was going, I would never have gone. I played soccer all growing up, but I definitely didn't want to wrestle people, which is probably the, the closest comparison if you don't know what jujitsu is. Um, it's probably closest to wrestling. Um, you're, you're grappling with someone, but instead of trying to pin someone in wrestling, you're trying to submit them, um, like gain a position of dominance and submit them. So I wish I knew that the sport was male dominated and that I would be sometimes, and often still, even five and a half years in, and even though there are many, many women who train, I'm often the only woman on the mat. It's not uncommon for me to be in a room of 30 dudes and be the only girl training. And there are definitely positives and negatives to that and I'll, I'll get into it. I do train with guys obviously, otherwise I wouldn't really be able to train. Um, and I have like guy training partners and friends who I love and adore, but I wish I knew that I would so frequently be the only woman in the room and that sometimes people treat you differently because of that. Some people don't wanna roll with you. Sometimes it's hard to find training partners, especially if you go to a new school uh, because people are like, either I'm gonna get beat by this girl or I'm just gonna beat this girl up so I don't wanna take the risk, right? People like, it takes time for people to assess your skill level before they decide if it's like, like worth rolling with you, which is unfortunate um, because jujitsu is really about technique. Strength matters, athleticism matters for sure, but there is some of that bias there. And so as a woman, I, I have struggled, especially going to new gyms, not in my current gym or any gym that I've stayed like long-term. But if I go to a new gym, like when I'm traveling, it's it's harder to find training partners and people treat me different than say my boyfriend when, when he walks in. People are like, oh, what's up? Nice to meet you, man. And people are like, oh, hi, you know. So um, that's just one thing. Uh, sometimes you're not always taken seriously. You'll get some sly comments. And like I said, I wanna preface this by saying, most men in jiu-jitsu are awesome. I've met great people in jiu-jitsu, some of the best men I've ever met. But every once in a while you do get like some kind of slight comment, like someone who is like, oh, you're gonna teach me something, or someone who uh, doesn't wanna roll with you because you're a girl, you know, maybe it's like, they think it's like sexual or something. Um, and they're like, oh, I, I don't think I should roll with women or or maybe just someone is is rude to you because you're a woman or avoids you because you're a woman and they think, oh, it's not, not worth it for me to train with them. So that's kind of the dark side of it being a male dominated sport. The, the upside is that I've been able to create bonds and relationships with men, um, like totally platonic, like kind of like bro bonds with men that I never even thought was possible. To be in a place where you feel safe and protected by men, I think is kind of uncommon for a lot of women, including myself. And so jujitsu really gave that to me and, and I'm really grateful for that. Tip number four that I wish I knew is how to train on your period. So what I would recommend doing is what I personally do actually is I use a cup and then I use a period proof um, underwear or I actually have developed with Alchemize a period proof compression short. It's not available for sale yet, but I'll put the links down below in case it is when you watch this video. Um, but I, I roll in those samples all the time and I love them because it just gives me this extra backup and this extra feeling of, okay, I'm not gonna leak on the mat which I, I love because you're you're training with other people, you're in super close contact with people and you just wanna feel comfortable. You wanna feel like you're protected and that your period is not the, the thing you're working about, worrying about. So I think wearing a cup is the best because it's not gonna absorb with sweat or anything. It's really clean, it, it stays in place, it doesn't leak as much and then some kind of backup is, is the best. But wearing a pad, alone um, or even wearing a tampon alone i don't really suggest a pad is going to soak up with sweat and it's going to move around a lot uh, which to me is just sounds like such a gross experience so and it's gonna smell more and you're maybe someone's in your triangle you know like you put your legs around their head and i just would feel a little bit self-conscious about it um, and a tampon i think leaks a little bit too much so just that's what I do, would do for my period um, along the lines of like 
hygiene and how to tie your hair for jujitsu, get one of these, like these silicone hair ties. Like I said, my hair has been destroyed from jujitsu, but this is the only thing that helps it. When I was using cloth hair ties or even scrunchies, I've tried everything. I've tried headbands, I've tried a bunch of stuff. This is the only thing that helps because it doesn't like put as much strain on your hair So there's not as much tearing and like what I would recommend doing and I'm a little lazy So I don't always do it is like put it here in a ponytail and then braid the ponytail and put another one at the bottom I think that's the best way to style your hair for jujitsu a lot of times I just put it in a ponytail or a bun because I'm trying to get ready quick But if I could re recommend an optimal way, I would tell you to do that so another thing that I wish I knew early on before starting jujitsu was to pick my training partners wisely and to pick my training partners with goals in mind. In the beginning, I would just roll with anyone and maybe that was the right thing to do. I just needed experience and time on the mat, but now I'm much more choosy about who I roll with and the goals that I roll with people with. So for example, I used to roll with anyone, white belt, 230 pound dude, 230 pound white belt, which is like double trouble. You know, he could hurt me because maybe he's more spastic and also he has a lot of weight, power and force behind that. Now, I spend a lot more time with people who are closer to my own size, number one. If I do roll with people who are bigger and really the only exception to this is, is my boyfriend who's much bigger than me, I roll with a different goal in mind. So with him, um, he's been training a little bit longer than me, six years, I've been training five and a half. And I go there like looking to learn technique and like looking to kind of drill and work through things together instead of like, oh, let's kill each other, which is what we used to do in the past. Um, there are other people who I roll with to test myself and like, oh, let's kill each other. Even people who are better than me, like in training who maybe it would be better if I just seek their advice, maybe they're a similar size to me and they can teach me through rolling much better. So I just roll with people differently now with different goals in mind. Maybe if someone's um, a little bit less experienced than me or less technical, I'll roll and put myself in positions that I'm working on, you know, that I'm not like, it's not my A game or it's not like the path that I've developed for myself, but I just, have started to find training partners who are closer to my size, who are closer to my belt rank or higher belt rank than me, and who I really feel like are gonna teach me something in the role instead of, you know, getting me hurt because I wanna be in jiu-jitsu for the long haul and when I was getting in, I was getting injured training with anyone, you know, and training haphazardly. And I guess I'll end on a positive note. So I've made a video all about the benefits of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for women. I'll tag it here. This video has been more about like the negative things, but one of the positive things about Jiu Jitsu as a woman, and there's a ton, is like the girl tribe that you meet in Jiu Jitsu, like of women who've actually been training for some time, we're just out for each other. We are, and I know there are some schools where it's more toxic and girls are in competition with each other, but in most schools, women are there to support each other. There's so few of us on the mat and those women are like you. They do something really hard every day. They put themselves in an environment where they're one of the very few women as well. Um, they're there challenging themselves every day. So I think that those women, you have a lot of common in common with them, period. And they're so, supportive of you because if you get better it makes them better it's going to force them to be better and vice versa and so i think like for women it's pretty uncommon to be in those situations women can be more catty um, and i've definitely been in social circles where that's been the case i've not found that in jujitsu women are just out for each other and trying to support each other which is awesome Jiu-Jitsu totally changes how you think about your body, about your life, and, and makes you a better person. There's more benefits of Jiu-Jitsu in that video, so um, this video is getting a little bit long, but those are some of the things that I wish I knew before I started BJJ, um, some of the lessons that I've learned. Thank you so much for watching. As always, check out my business, Alchemize Fightwear. Links are down below. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.